Hey good day, it's Brazo here. I'm uh, back in the shop today working on making a replacement DIY sandblasting gun for my recently purchased Heron and Forbes or uh, Harbour Freight sandblasting cabinet. This is the one that I purchased and uh, I put it together and I've been using it but I was totally unhappy with this style of gun that came with that cabinet and I decided I was going to try to improve the quality of the uh, the process by making myself uh, an improved type of sandblasting gun. And this is what I came up with. Now I've done two videos, one on the casting for making the body of this gun and also one for machining all of the various bits and pieces for it. And I'll put a card up if you want to go back and look at those videos. But this video is about proving that this gun is going to have a better suction than the original gun that came with my sandblasting cabinet. Now I've developed a testing process uh, which we'll look at in a minute and we're going to test the old gun to get a sort of a baseline figure on what sort of suction it can create and then we'll have a look at the, the new upgrade gun. So it's worth noting that this particular gun here has a fixed nozzle size or a fixed jet size of 2.5 millimeters. The upgrade gun, I'm starting with a jet size of uh, two millimeters. I'm going to increase that by 0.25 of a millimeter at a time. And that way we can sort of dial in the, the best jet size for uh, this particular gun. Now I've also made this so that I can swap out these nozzles. Now these are ceramic nozzles. They came with the original gun that came with the sandblasting cabinet. There are three of them and they start at a 5.2 millimeter diameter then they go to a six and a seven millimeter nozzle. So we'll try all three of those as well. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll, we'll start with this gun. We'll put all three nozzles in it and test it. And then we'll go to this gun and we'll do all three nozzles, but we'll also change the jet size progressively as we go. Now, also this jet is removable. So I can position this and slide it backwards and forwards inside the body of the gun to find the optimum position for it inside the chamber where the vacuum is created. So uh, we'll do that first with this gun and once we got that dialed in then we'll try all the other tests. Now just so you know that this is all official, I have a clipboard which is uh, the essential piece of equipment if you're doing testing, you must have a clipboard. So. On this uh, chart, what I'm going to do is start off with this gun. So I'm calling this the HF gun for the Harbour Freight or Heron Forbes. And I've got the three nozzle sizes which we'll test and the two and a half millimeter jet size which I really can't change. We're going to be testing at 10 PSI. Now you're probably saying that's too low, uh, but you'll see in a minute why we have to test at that pressure. This is the chart for the upgrade gun. I've got all three nozzle sizes across the top. I've got all the jet sizes down the bottom and then hopefully we're going to see a picture in here of where the sweet spot is which is the best combination of jet size and nozzle size. So uh, let's go and have a look at the test rig and then we'll get on with the testing process. Okay here is our test rig. This is in fact a very crude form of manometer and a manometer is a device for testing pressure or pressure differential or vacuum and normally this would be a, like a U-shaped tube filled with mercury and they use mercury because uh, being heavier and more dense uh, you don't have as much vertical height in the tube. Now in this case I've got my clear plastic tube uh, which you can see here. This is what we're going to be uh, drawing the water up into and I've used uh, a black dye in the water so we can see quite clearly how far it's coming up that tube. Alongside that I've got a PVC tube marked in centimeters and that goes up to the top where I've got the, the gun connected and if I extend that clear tube all the way we're getting roughly 2.1 meters or 2.2 meters of lift and uh, in order to make this work I've had to keep the air pressure relatively low so it's between 8 and 10 psi we're going to use the same pressure of all the tests it's set on a regulator so it shouldn't change now if I go any higher than that, uh, you know, if I go up to realistic pressures like 80 or 90 psi, it just sucks the water straight up the tube and into the gun uh, and we're not going to get any comparative results. So what we'll do is we'll hook up the, uh, the commercially made gun first and we'll test that with all of the different size nozzles and then we'll swap over to this gun, which is mine, and uh, we'll do a similar test.
Okay, so this is the commercially made gun with a 7mm nozzle. Okay, and that was settling at about 64 centimeters. Okay, so 7mm nozzle and 64 centimeters. So we're going to swap out to the 6 and we'll try that. Okay, so commercial gun, 6mm nozzle in 3, 2, 1. And that was about 80 centimeters. So here we go with the 5.25. It's about 89 centimeters. And interestingly, the smaller the hole in the nozzle, the more lift we get on the, the liquid. Now remember, all of these were done with a two and a half millimeter jet, and I can't change the size, but this will give us a, a rough baseline when we start looking at the upgrade gun. So we're gonna to go to the upgrade gun now. I'm gonna show you how we'll tune the position of the jet inside the body. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we'll connect the air. And remember, I don't have a trigger on this gun, so we're just using the coupling straight onto the gun itself. So as soon as I connect the air, it's gonna start sucking the water. I'm gonna loosen the two grub screws and we'll slide the jet backwards and forwards and just watch the relative position of the liquid inside that tube. Okay, well that's connected. The jet pushed all the way forward. I'm going to slide it back. Right, that seems to be the best position there. Okay, so our first test, we got the diameter 7 nozzle in the, the gun and I got the 2mm jet. So we'll connect it up at the same pressure and just see where we get to on the manometer. Okay, that's about 61 centimetres. Alright, so 2 millimetre jet, 7 millimetre nozzle, 61 centimetres. We got 64 with the commercially made gun. But don't panic, everything's fine. <laughs> we'll keep going with this test. So this is the 6mm nozzle, still with a 2mm jet. Alright, 86. Alright, the 5.2. Okay, I call on that 90. So we're slightly ahead uh, with the 5.2 nozzle, we were 89 with the, the original gun, 90 with the upgrade. Now let's swap out to a 2.25 millimeter jet, see what we get. Okay, I just drilled that out to 2.25. We'll put it back in the same position. I've got a sharpie mark on the back there so I know where that is. And we'll connect this up. I've got the seven millimeter nozzle. All right, so let's give that a try. Okay, 87 with that seven mil nozzle. We'll go down the line, do the same again. So we're doing the six millimeter nozzle with the 2.5, no, 2.25 millimeter jet. So one, two, one. Let's try the 5.2. So, you know, significantly better than the 2.5 millimeter jet. And I'm guessing that we're using less air as well. So we're gonna change that now to a two and a half millimeter jet, do those three tests again. Okay, this is the seven millimeter nozzle and two and a half millimeter jet. So 
So it looks like we're down a bit with the two and a half millimeter jet. So we'll just do those three tests, so fully. Okay, six millimeter nozzle, two and a half millimeter jet. Right, one, one, two. So, we're actually going backwards. So it seems to me that this 2.25 millimeter jet is the optimum size. And I don't think there's any point in drilling this out any bigger. I think we're just gonna go backwards. And the other thing is that I don't really wanna use a bigger jet because it means I'm using more air. Now, whether this translates to more efficient cleaning action by the media, I don't know. But uh, certainly I'm going to start with that and then we can sort of mess around, change the jet size and the nozzle size. But it's looking like this is producing the most suction and it's significantly better than the commercially made gun. So let's try it out in the blast cabinet now and see how that works. Okay, well this is the, uh, the real world test, isn't it? <laughs> I've got the, the new gun inside the cabinet. It's hooked up to my compressor with about 100 psi of pressure. I'm going to turn the vacuum on so we don't get too much dust inside here so you can see what's going on. Now I've got a piece of cast iron with a painted finish on it and we're going to try and strip the paint off that. I've also got a piece of um, mild steel, just six millimeter thick mild steel with a sort of corroded finish on it. We'll see how that goes. And I've got my foot pedal hooked up so we can control the air. Now this is going to get noisy so I can't talk over the top of it but uh, we'll just see what it looks like and just see what sort of continuous cleaning action we can get from this. Okay, we'll do this cast iron first. Okay, let's try this piece of steel plate next. I've just removed those two pieces from the blast cabinet. Now, this piece of cast iron was coated with a automotive filler and a spray putty 
and an enamel top coat and you might have seen it going down through the different layers of paint as it cleaned. This um, crusty layer here is the old automotive filler and that's you know quite hard but if I worked that out I could get that off that's not a problem. The, the reason I put this in here is so that you could see the cleaning action and how continuous that is. Now if you look in this footage this is the media coming up through the delivery tube and you see it's not continuous. It's still coming up, it's still surging but interestingly the gun seems to be delivering the blast media almost continuously even though it's coming up in glugs and bursts from the hopper. So that is at least an improvement. It's certainly not as good as I was hoping it would be. And uh, I'm now curious about uh, all the videos that I've seen about the Tacoma upgrades for these blast cabinets. Now, either somebody's telling fibs about how good they are, or I just have got uh, errors and problems with the, the metering valve and also the gun that I built. But I'd be interested to hear from anybody who put one of those Tacoma upgrades in their blast cabinet. And I'd just like to know whether you do actually get uh, continuous delivery of blast media up that tube from the hopper. But certainly comparing this to the, the old gun that I got, it's, it's better. And remember I said I got about 35% increase in suction. That's about what I think I'm getting in terms of delivery at the workpiece or at the part. So for the small amount of blasting that I do, I'm happy with this. Now this is the piece of steel plate. The key on that's good enough for uh, painting. It's going to you know take paint really well. So once again, you know for a part that size, it would take me about I don't know five to ten minutes to completely blast that and get it clean. So you know once again I'm sort of that's as good as I want it to be. So uh, where do we go from here? Well, that's interesting. Now this is the the new and improved version of the gun. <laughs> and this is a, a drawing showing the various parts attached to the casting. Now there's an outline here which is tapered at the nose end of the gun and it meets the delivery tube with a sort of a quite a large radius here and it's tapered also at the rear. Now that's the design of the new cavity that I'm going to put inside this the second generation casting for this gun. The old version you can see here, it had a blunt end on it, a uh, blunt end here, it had sharp corners and uh, although that seems to work I think we can improve matters. There is almost continuous venturi coming down from the casting and meeting the tapered inlet for the nozzle. So remember these nozzles do have a tapered opening and I've tried to match up the casting with the taper on that nozzle. Now that may or may not make a difference, I don't know, but certainly I'm going to give it a go. And uh, the other interesting thing is, for all those people that uh, requested lightning bolts on the new gun, now I did a Google search this morning, just an image search, and I searched for ray gun, and this is what I got, complete with lightning bolt. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's a similarity, isn't there? So <laughs> I don't know. I really feel compelled now to have little rings, decorative rings on both ends of the gun, but that's probably overdoing it. So stick around, we're going to see the second generation casting. I won't do all of that on camera, I'll just show you what it looks like when we're done. So um, in summary, what have we learned? Well, we do get an improvement, I'm thinking like 35-40% is about right. It seems to be using less air than the old gun. Uh, the compressor does cut in and it sort of runs almost continuously while I'm working with that media. But uh, there's also a bit of an issue now about my compressor. So let's have a look at that. Well, I've just realized how disgraceful this thing looks. Uh, it's just one of those cases of, you know, out of sight, out of mind. It's built in under a bench. And uh, look, this unit is 30 years old. I bought this when I was building my house. I wanted something that was light and easy to drag around the building site and I was just running a framing gun anyway. And uh, with that in mind I purchased a you know, cheap unit so I didn't have a lot of budget at that time. And this is a twin cylinder single phase 10 amp compressor. And it's got a lot of miles on the clock 
it served me well and you know most of the time I've used it just for spray painting and cleaning and uh, you know running small air tools and so on but I think it's about time I need to look at an upgrade did a bit of research online and uh, you know what I would dearly love to own is a three-phase compressor but I don't have three-phase power in the shop this is a, um, uh, most of my power points over this side of the shop are all 10 amp and if I was to run something like a 15 amp compressor I'd need to get a dedicated line put in for that. But they're all things to consider, you know, it's all doable. If I was to go with a three phase unit I could get a VFD fitted to it and run it that way. But um, yeah, look, it's, it's, I think, time for an upgrade. But, you know, downside is, man, they're expensive <laughs> when you look at what you know, what you can afford um, and what you can fit into a tight space, and this is built under the bench, uh, then it becomes a bit of a struggle. But anyway, with that in mind, uh, I need to get upstairs now. It's getting towards morning tea time, and I want to bake a batch of scones because the wife and I are going to sit down and we're going to discuss, you know, those important issues around, um, you know, the economy, future travel plans, and whether I can have a new compressor or not. So, yeah, well, look, stand by. I'll let you know how that pans out.